It's good that, isn't it, Johnny? Fabulous. It is. It is. She's like the kind of uh, 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 Shirley Bassey for a whole new generation, Anna Count. She's uh, the big big production, all right. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You'll works. like this as well. Um, we're talking about underwhelmings today. Um, uh, Jenny Bauer said, overheard on honeymoon in Iceland whilst on a bus tour, um, uh, the stunning majestic sight of the meeting of two tectonic plates. We overheard an American woman saying to her husband not to bother taking a photograph as... It's just scenery, honey. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. And Carl the T-shirt. She's man. got a point. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I was taken to... I was uh, the, the southern tip of India, and I think three oceans meet there, or the Arabian Sea and two oceans or something. It just looked like a gang of water. A gang of water, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Although, actually, there's a slightly different coloration. Bizarre. Is it really? Mm. Yeah, well, I think it's off the tip of Tamil Nadu. So it's got a long way to go uh, to be uh, not especially whelmed. And Carl the T-shirt man in Lincolnshire said, I was the resident DJ at a cabaret club in Loughborough and we booked Emil Ford and the Checkmates. Oh, you remember? He wasn't underwhelmed by Emil, was well, he? Well... It says upon How greeting. How jaded have you got to be? <laughs> it says upon greeting Mr. Ford and enquiring as to the whereabouts of the checkmates, he handed me a cassette and said, "It's all on there, mate." I'm not surprised, but I've heard that story before. <laughs> you, that, He'd, he'll do a gig in your front room. Right, brilliant. He does that. He does birthday party. If, if, if you can, if you can pay the price, you can have Emil and the, check, and the checkmates on a cassette. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Did you, ever, did, did you ever do gigs in Peter? It's been quite... Uh... In somebody's front room? Yeah. No. No. You're doing gigs more or less everywhere I else, aren't you? I wouldn't rule it out. No, no. Uh, yeah, you're doing more or less gigs everywhere else, aren't you? You are the busiest you've ever been, probably, are you? Without a doubt, Marky. Yeah? And you, yeah. Look, you look good on it, though. You look well. well. I, the reason I look well, though, to be fair, is I, 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 got off, I got back off holiday last week. Where did you go? Although I was on holiday, I was scribbling away there. Yeah. I'm never really on holiday. No, I know. Where well, do I'm you... like the police. You know, I'm never really on holiday. And well, now I'm a doctor. Well, um, I, can't, I, can't, I can't afford to go to sleep. Right, OK. Well, you, you, Somebody you... might need me somewhere. <laughs> Are you a doctor of letters now? Are you an honorary doc? <laughs> yeah, I'm a doc. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Cooper Clark. Trust me. Where do you go? Where do you go on your holidays? I'm not, I don't have you down as a sun worshipper, Clarky. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I've been in uh, France. Been in. We're staying with my uh, wonderful family. Right. Okay. And um, um, my wife's sister Arlette, and then my wife's sister Christiane, and right. then, you know, all around. That. It was like a million dollar holiday. I didn't get me handed me pocket money. Not that that's the measure of anything. But it's a start, though, it's, isn't it? It, was, it? It got embarrassing. <laughs> it got embarrassing. And do you, um, uh, you it's when you lovely you're, time, beautiful time. When you're on holiday, do you do, do you? I mean, your hair's sort of resplendent, sort of you know, like um, a pineapple today. It's refreshed. It is. It's lovely. Do you do that on? Or do you go flat on holiday? Do you sort of let it? But to be honest, I've had, a, I've had an hat on for five weeks. Have you? Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, just protecting the cranium from yeah. the fierce sun of the Côte d'Azur. Right, OK. <laughs> um, Cooper Clark with a tan would really confound people's uh, expectations, I, I, wouldn't it? Because you are... You, 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 you yeah, know, you I, do. I, I yeah. don't tan well. No, right. Well, it's, I mean, it must be years since you had a sun tan, is it? I don't think I've ever had one. <laughs> I lived in Spain for a year and managed to avoid it. <laughs> we I, think should... I think I'm one of nature's albinos. One of nature's... <laughs> Nature's anemics. <laughs> um, uh, we should say congratulations because you're number one in the charts today. Yeah, th yeah. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Alex Turner. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's featured some of my lyrics, and it's. Yeah. So I, I was just saying, you know, it, what with Alex and Ben Drew, you know, I'm, you know what lesson I'm taking away from all this. Huh. If you want to get a number one record, get me involved. Well. It's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the only conclusion you can draw. It's the only reasonable conclusion yeah. I can draw. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to be yours on the Arctics album, and the, uh, it's a number one album. I mean, Alex is a long term. It went, as soon as he started doing interviews, he was name checking you, wasn't he? Yeah, great. Yeah, I think, like Ben, I think they both did us at school, you know, on the, right. the old curriculum. Right, like. yeah. yeah. And. Uh, so yeah, and uh, took it in ram. You know, well, obviously they, they would have they would have done it anyway. I mean, blimey! Yeah, these are very talented people I'm talking about here. Well, of course, but you know, well, it, if I can help, and you've, <laughs> you've never heard it, you said. Uh, no, no, we're going to hear it now, aren't we? We're going to hear it now. Premier Tom. Uh, all right then. So it's Arctic Monkeys with words by John Cooper Clark, and I want to be yours, number one in them their charts. Fall me down. Right. The thing that's hooked everybody in 
stuff like that, you know. Drummer as well. Yeah, so, man. Uh, So, so it's it's, oh, it's some of were great on Glastonbury. Well, oh, that's that's achingly beautiful as I, as I imagined it would have been. Yeah, sensational, I love that. Man. Yeah, um, uh, really Arctic Monkeys. Um, uh, which, uh, so, so it's it's, it's some they of they were great on Glastonbury. Weren't they, they were they, amazing. They treated it like a club date. There was a personal connection with all them, like how many thousand, hundreds of thousand people. But he made he made it like a, an intimate experience, didn't he? No, so, I thought he was a superstar. Wonderful, uh, marvelous. Um, uh, so and, and, and the lads are great, are fantastic. They were a fate accompli right from the start, weren't they? Fantastic know? drummer as well. Yeah. Um, so that, that's um, so it's like some of your words, and he's added to he's sort of appropriate. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's put his he's put his mark on it. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's from great. the number one album, great. AM. Great. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's um, Alex says. I've got a quote here from Alex. He says, "I was your typical teenager trying to be cool and not interested." And the teacher proceeded to read, "I want to be yours," doing an impression. Of John, it made me ears prick up in the classroom because it was nothing like anything I'd heard. Um, had I not seen him do his thing, I wouldn't have started writing like that. Well, that's, thanks. <laughs> it's amazing. Well, I mean, that's fabulous. But that's very similar to my story, anyway. I, you know, it was a it was a teacher that conveyed the beauty of poetry to me as well. You know, what you know, what uh, poetry in particular? Well, uh, it was mainly nineteenth century stuff. You know, Sir Henry Newbolt, right? People, uh, stuff like that. You know, and which we learnt Michael Gove style. You know, right? But because it was such an it was a kind of rugged outdoor type. You know what I mean? And he conveyed a love of nineteenth century poetry to the whole class. So, you know, it's it's the way you tell them, isn't it? Well, it's absolutely it for me. Jared Manley Hopkins, for me. Was it a school? Mm, the wind hover and all yeah, those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought, yeah. blimey, that's re just so the kind of the so use of words. So, it's, it, so it, it's very encouraging to know that that can still happen. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. other thing that's the yeah. link between all that is that, like, you know, when people were surprised about perform performance poetry, but in fact, the thing that's hooked everybody in down the years a, is performance. Uh, it was the, it, that's what it's for. Yeah. That's what it's for. You know, Shakespeare wrote for actors. You know, it's meant to be heard. If it doesn't sound any good, it's because it's no good. Right, yeah. It's, it's a phonetic medium. It's written in a... It's a cool medium when you're writing it, but when you're reading it, it becomes a hot medium. Yeah. If you had to, to use a, a, the language of the late Marshall McLuhan. <laughs> not leaving you behind now, man. I keep forgetting you're not doctors. <laughs> I am not a doctor. everybody's a doctor. I must I keep am. reminding myself. I of am. That, you know, so. I am. You are, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> huh? Bloody hell. The, 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 the thought of him with a scalpel in his hand. It's <laughs> horrifying, isn't it? Uh, me and Stuart. <laughs> me and Stuuart got um, honorary and uh, the doctors. Have are, you? Really? Yeah, we have. Uh, listen, listen to this jingle. Six music. Radcliffe and McCauley. The doctors of pop will see you now. There you the go. The doctors yes. of pop. <laughs> that's so that's us. yours. Specialist that's field us. of endeavour, is it? <laughs> it is. Universe. See, I'm, see, I'm a, a brain and eye man. Right. Yeah. Where was your? Where's your, who? Be, who bestowed upon you your doctorate? Uh, Harold Shipp. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, sorry, no, sorry, no, sorry. no, no, uh, no. No, it was, uh, I get carried away with uh, mirth at this time. Right, yeah. Day. I'm sorry, I've been on holiday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where was your doctorate from? Uh, Salford. Ah, right, yeah. Okay. Salford. From we're, but we're Bolton. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that works in terms of doctorate trumps. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you mean, right? Call that a doctorate. Right. <laughs> um, what have you got? You got a poem for us, have you? You're going to read. I mean, is it something yeah. new you've been yeah. working well, on? As you probably know, uh, Doctor Radcliffe. Yeah. Um, with the uh, with the medical profession comes a few benefits. Right. And in my case, I've been able to realise a long-held dream, the dream of owning. A, a bar in the shape of a boat. Have you got one of those? I've just acquired one. I've just acquired it. Expect uh, an invite to a nautically themed drinks evening any type soon. So this is a little Written cocktail. Written rope. A little sort of lounge <laughs> cocktail bar. Yeah, yeah. Like got, the prow of a little yeah. boat. And you, you put your glasses down in where the cabin cruiser windows are. That's right. There's one porthole, yeah. a brass rail. Yeah. 
Well, can I just say hello to my friend Andy Batten Foster, who's got the same. Has he bar? got one? Yeah. Well, you'll appreciate this yeah. one, guys. Yeah. This might be. This might have a limited user base on this poem, but we'll, we'll roll you know, with this it. This is we'll, for all the we'll people who realise their nautical. Well, we are an island race, and I think in, in, inside every Englishman mm. is the desire for a boat-shaped bar. <laughs> but it does have its problems. Right. Now I imagine people sat in some drafty pub where they're not allowed to have a fag. They'll all be thinking, what are we doing paying these inflated prices for this rubbish beer in this cold and empty, moribund space that used to be a pub where we can't even have a sick? Why don't we go get round to Clark's? He's got one of them boat-shaped bars. So I've now got a load of different... I've got a load of problems getting rid of people <laughs> now. So it's about the... And it's introduced me to a whole morally bankrupt world of not caring about them... Uh, having had too much to drink, but trying to usher them into their cars mm. and, and off home. It's a familiar problem. You know, it's not my problem. Once mm. they've left... The way, way I see it, when they've left the promises... Left the, when they've left the premises, it's, it's more their problem. Yeah. So this is my plea to get them into their car, respective cars and out of my gaff, you know, yeah. right, right? Don't don't drink, it, and, don't drink and drive, kids. That, don't drink and drive, kids. It was inspired by the Mungo Jerry, uh, have a drink, have a drive. <laughs> Go out and see me get... That was in the <laughs> yeah, summertime, yeah, wasn't right, it? Yeah, well, yeah. kids, don't. Just don't, don't do that. Don't. don't take any notice of Jerry Dorsey. <laughs> right. Dor Ray Dorsey. Ray, uh, Ray Dorsey. Ray Dorsey. Don't take any notice Isn't of Isn't Jerry Ray Dorsey, Dorsey Engelbert Umperdinck? That's Engelbert Umperdinck. Right, OK. Right, you can right. have a drink and have a drive, but it's got to be like Panda Cola or Pop. Oh, give me a soft drink. A soft drink and drive, yeah. by all means. But, uh, it, but it is a... This, uh, my boat doesn't <laughs> carry any... Soft drinks, right. I'm afraid. So okay. uh, it's right. introduced me to, as I say, to a whole morally bankrupt world of, okay. the, of the reluctant public. And <laughs> 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 so here it is. It's called nautically themed drinks evening blues. <laughs> I got one of them boat shaped bars. I'm guided by the stars. Me and my fellow Jolly Jack Tars and a cabin boy named Lars like to raise a nautical tray full of jars and three hail hurrahs, a couple of heartfelt tatars, and back in the cars, boys, back in the cars. The cocktails are combustible, the yard arm fully adjustable, the brass rails anti rustable, there's a ship shaped Shangri La. But back in the car, shipmate, scotch on draft, a worthy craft, Bristol fashion, don't be daft, there's a fourth martini, back aft then, back in the car, ahoy there, bugger ah, get back in the car, shipmate, back in the car, seven bells and clinkety clink, leave it, We've all had a drink, it's probably later than anybody thinks. Back in the car, boys, back in the car. You bring the sunshine anywhere you are, but you got to go home sometime. Back in the car. Seaworthy, not really, nah. Back in the car, with a barrel of charcuterie and very little fruitery. The sailor's life is new to me. There's one porthole for scrutiny. There's never been a mutiny. Liquid fancies from afar. Flavour, flavour, ra ra ra. Back in the car, boys. Back in the car. We have sunk a yard or three. These scurvy dogs and me. You can follow our, our adventures in my forthcoming tome. Astonishing tales o oh, the sea. Your designated driver is so blind he cannot see. Still, back in the car, shipmates, back in the car. The cocktails are flammable, the cocktails are inflammable. The service here is damnable, and the food is under par. But you want to stay, it's understandable, but back in the car, boys, back in the car. <laughs> Uh, John Cooper, should we have Johnny Kidd and the Pirates yeah, to continue yeah, yeah. the seafaring? To carry on, to, exactly. to string out the nautical uh, metaphor. That's right, the seafaring, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, very good for me, you know, like, when they want to...
Oh. I'm doing a, a pirate themed uh, gig myself on Thursday night. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Telford's in Chester. Where at? Uh, Telford's in Chester. Have they got the place done out like a galley on a They better have. But we need one of your bar. How much did he pay for your bar? 40 quid. Bargain. I mean, that is just a steal, isn't it? Fancy, he was throwing it out. Yeah, well. You know what I reckon? I could, I could, if I'd have played my cards right, I could have. Uh, he could have paid me to get rid of it. Exactly. Could've you know said. what women are like when they want to get rid of something out of the house? It's just gone. It's you history. Know what I mean? I'd, I'd have been helping him out, really. You would, but. really. Yeah, yeah. Really? Anyway, yeah, for, for um, quid, it's... For, well, you, you've done all right. You're playing a gig every night of your life, more or less. That's right. I paid for it. I paid for it. You paid for it, yeah. Five weeks ago. That's right, yeah. So, and, oh, and there must me. be there must be an envelope full of cash coming from Alex and the uh, the Arctics, <laughs> mustn't there? So you'd be fine. Don't worry about me. <laughs> right, yeah. um, how was festival number six? How was Port Marion? Oh, terrific. Apparently, yeah, yeah. It was uh, very good for me. I got a, a huge crowd there in the uh, in the uh, the square. You know. Uh, well, yeah, you know, you can imagine it in the uh, in the prisoner. Yeah, were you a prisoner bit. fan? Were you? No, I, oh, absolutely, I was. Yeah, yeah, because mm. I like Danger Man. Yeah, yeah. You know, I always do. Fa- <laughs> so I like that anyway. So yeah. I thought, you know, I always assumed it was him leaving the uh, Secret Service. Really, right. even though he didn't have a name in that. So I went without saying if you'd been a Danger Man fan. Yeah. It was him, wasn't it? Oh, I see, right. Your knowledge couldn't is great. Sort of, I never uh, watched Couldn't Danger square Man. his conscience with the things he was having to do. Right. You know what I mean? It was a yeah. crisis of conscience, wasn't it? It was, yeah. All them bits at the beginning, like where he slams his hand down on the that cup of tea goes everywhere. <laughs> 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 Another thing you've been doing since I last saw you, you, you did... You were Sunday night at the London Palladium, official. Sunday night. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. For Welcome you, for, to Sunday night at the London Palladium. Because yeah. that was the big variety oh, show for, it, for the, the younger listeners, wasn't it? Gigs. Yeah. Gold standard, no, no doubt about it, wasn't it? Mario Lanza. Was Bruce Forsyth the host of it? Yeah, he was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right at the beginning, and then Norman Vaughan, and uh, he, he took over from Tommy Trinder. Right, OK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, it, oh, it launched. I mean, that's the gig that launched, Brucey. Right, OK. Yeah. And how was it, Sunday Fantastic. night at the London Palladium? Fantastic. You had right. your own all sort of all variety bill, didn't you? It was all poetry, though. Was it? Yeah, was it 100%. Oh, actually, no, a couple of, couple of singers. I had Viv Albertine on and, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, a couple of singers, a couple of singers. But it was mainly it was poetry. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, filled, filled, jammed it out. Must right. have been. What a great feeling to well, have jammed well, out the, Sunday, the, the feeling. London I mean, Palladium. That, to me, to somebody at my age, that is like the gold standard. I yeah. know, it really is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you're doing Shepherd's Bush Empire in March. Yeah. Uh, tickets go on sale on Wednesday, and you're playing Leicester Comedy Festival as well. And uh, you, tomorrow you're in Bromsgrove. I mean, you are, you know, you're working all the time now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, are you enjoying it? I mean, is it because uh, you, I mean. Well, I do, I do, enjoy, I do enjoy it. Yes, I do. I do. Yeah. It's a great. It's not like, it's not work as I understand the term. No. Because it was a struggle for a while, wasn't it, working? You know, because you, you couldn't for quite a while, and now you kind of can't stop. It's yeah, like... that's right, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard and crew. So I saw John at Nantwich last week, it was a cracking night. He attempted a stage dive at one point, but it was off the back of the stage. Off the back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was one of these art centres, sort of, you know. Yeah. 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 The mood cut, it's a stage dive off the back. I wonder if it? they've got the writ yet. Right. For that whiplash that I suffered. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds self-inflicted to me. It's people like you who's putting my car I'm insurance just put, I'm up. just piecing my case together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If everything goes according to plan, I might, I might never have to leave the house ever again. <laughs> are you doing another book? What, are these new poems going to be in an anthology or a collection? Yeah, they've got to be, in it, Mark? It's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, there's no way around it. I was going to bring one out ages ago, but I'm glad I held back because I've got a lot more now. But, right, yeah. Uh, but, oh, and they've also re-released uh, the uh, 19. 19- 7981 collection, 10 years in an open next year, is also available from good stockists everywhere. Which is, the, I've, I've still got that thing. And I've still got the Snap, Crackle and Bop on, which is I'd got... I'd get another one if I were you, Mark. Right, you yeah. know, they fall apart. Right, so OK, yeah, the sales push now, quickly. is it? Sales push. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, all right, we're going to play a record. You want to play something like This is by um, uh, Duffy Power. Yeah, this is Duffy Power, who, obviously, but judging by his surname... It might be his real name, actually, so common enough. It's an Irish name, Yeah. as is Duffy. Yeah. Never put them to... But if, well, it was anyway, one, if he was one of Larry Palmer's, he, was, he yeah, made it everybody be, change he, the he, name. Yeah, but... that's right, he named everybody after a human quality, yeah. didn't he? John, uh, Vince Eager. Right. <laughs> uh, Billy Fury. That's right. Georgie Fame. 
Oh. Yeah, yeah, they were they were all named after uh, Dickie Pride. That's right. Yeah, all named after human qualities. But Duffy Powell was sort of the Georgie Fame end of things, and oh. he he sort of had a kind of slightly kind of jazzy, okay, sort of profile. Uh, he did. He had a big hit with it. Ain't necessarily so from the G- Gershwin musical. Porgy and Beth. Right, okay. But yeah. he put a rocking spin on it and got it into the church. There you go. But so, this isn't that. This is. No. And I, I'm as anxious to you, anxious as you are. Dream lover. To know whether this is the one that Bobby Darren made a hit out of. Let's have a listen. Good to see you. It's a great song if it is. It's good that, isn't it, Johnny? Fabulous. It though. is, it is. She's like the kind of a, a Shirley Bassey for a whole new generation, Anna Kelly. She's uh, the big big production, all right. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You'll works. like this as well. Um, we're talking about underwhelmings today. Um, uh, Jenny Bowers said, overheard on honeymoon in Iceland whilst on a bus tour, um, uh, the stunning majestic sight of the meeting of two tectonic plates. We overheard an American woman saying to her husband not to bother taking a photograph as it's just scenery, honey. And Carl, the T-shirt man in Lincolnshire, said, I was the resident DJ at a cabaret club in Loughborough and we booked Emil Ford and the Checkmates. Oh, You'll remember. He wasn't underwhelmed by Emil, was well, he? Well, he says, How jaded have you got to be? He <laughs> says, upon greeting Mr Ford and enquiring as to the whereabouts of the Checkmates, he handed me a cassette and said, It's all on there, mate. I'm not surprised, but I've heard that story before. <laughs> He'll do a gig in your front room. Right, brilliant. He does that. He does birthday parties. If, 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 if you can pay the price, you can have Emil. Emil. And, the check, and the checkmate's on a cassette. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Did Great you ever, singer. Did, did you ever do gigs in people? It's been quite... Uh... In somebody's front room? Yeah. No. No. You're doing gigs more or less everywhere I else. I wouldn't rule it out. No, no. Uh, yeah, you're doing more or less gigs everywhere else, aren't you? You are the busiest you've ever been, probably, are you? Without a doubt, Marky. Yeah? And you yeah. look you look good on it, though. You look well. well. I, the reason I look well, though, to be fair, is I, 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 got off, I got back off holiday last week. Where did you go? But although I was on holiday, I was scribbling away there. <laughs> 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 and Carl the T-shirt She's man. She's got a point. <laughs> I mean... I don't know. I mean, I was taken to... I was uh, the, the southern tip of India, and I think three oceans meet there, or the Arabian Sea and two oceans or something. It just looked like a gang of water. A gang of water, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Although, actually, there's a slightly different coloration, bizarre. Is it really? Mm. Yeah. Well, I think it's off the tip of Tamil Nadu, so it's got a long way to go. Uh, to be uh, not especially whelmed. Uh, yeah. I'm never really on holiday. No, I know. Where well, do you... I'm like the police. You know, I'm never really on holiday. And but... now I'm a doctor. Well, um... I, can't, I, can't, I can't afford to go to sleep. Right, OK. What, you, Somebody you... might need me somewhere. <laughs> Are you a doctor of letters now? Are you an honorary doc? <laughs> you have a doc. Yeah, yeah. Dr Cooper Clark? Trust me. Where did, you go... Where did you go on your holidays? I'm not... <laughs> I don't have you down as a sun worshipper, Clarky. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been in uh, France, been in, we're staying with my uh, wonderful family. Right, 